This video is loaded with everything you need to know about designing an attractive newsletter page in Adobe InDesign. Let's jump right in. Let's start a new file, set the width at 8.5 inches and height at 11 inches. One page, one column, we'll change that later. Let's go with half inch margins all around, then create. Note that in the world of InDesign, margins are guides, simply there for our reference. I recommend using the typography workspace. You can select your workspace right here. With the type tool, I'll click and drag to draw a text box, also referred to as a text frame, and then paste some text. I included this eco text in the description. Our text popped in with the Minion Pro font, which is often the default. I want to change that font. We could do that in the character panel, but let's go right to our paragraph styles panel and do it there instead. When you double click basic paragraph, this window opens up. I like to immediately go down to basic character formats. This is where we change most of our font formatting. Change to any other font, I'll choose Song TTC. If you have the preview checked, you will see the changes immediately. The font is at 12. I'll increase it to 14 and maybe I want a little more line spacing, which is my letting. So I'll take that up to 18. That's all I want to do for now, so I'll click OK. But what if I want my headers to be styled differently? I have three headers. There's one here, here, and here. Quick aside, when pasting in text, I like to take a peek at any extra spacing that may have come in with it. I do that by going to Type and Show Hidden Characters. This happens to be a nice clean text block with very clear paragraph breaks and no wonky spacing. If it isn't, I would clean it up now by deleting or adding spaces or paragraph breaks. I'll turn mine back off to hide those hidden characters. Okay, we've just styled our body text. Now let's style the header text. I can place my cursor anywhere within the header. You could highlight it, but you don't have to because this whole line will be recognized as a paragraph. Go to create new style, this little plus icon. It comes in as paragraph style one. Let's double click it to get to this options window. I'd like to rename my styles, so I will call this header. Now let's go to basic character formats and change the font to something like impact and increase the font size up to maybe 20. You can see it getting bigger. That's all the styling I want to do for now. So I'll click okay. Now it gets fun because it gets easier. We have two more headers that need to match that styling. Because we set up our paragraph styles, we can simply click anywhere within the next header and then select our header style. Click down here and again, select header. You're probably starting to understand the usefulness of this paragraph style feature. Imagine if you had a multi-page document with over 30 headers of the same styling. You decide later that you want to change that font style. Instead of changing it 30 times, if you had set it up in the paragraph styles panel, then you can change it in one place. I see that I have a bunch of hyphenated words, which I personally do not like. So I will remove those by doing this. Now go to the paragraph panel. The hyphenate option lives here down at the bottom. Simply uncheck it. What if we decide we'd rather have two columns? Not a problem. With a text box selected, again, that's important, go to the object dropdown and text frame option. I recommend keeping your preview box checked. Here at the number of columns, I'm going to increase by two. Now take a look at this space here. It's kind of tight. We call that the gutter. And over here is where you can adjust the gutter. Let's take that up to 0.375. Click OK. See how the gutter has now widened. Now let's add an image. Pay close attention because this part is somewhat unintuitive in my opinion. We do that by going to the file dropdown and place. That shortcut is Control or Command D. I will select this recycle graphic and click open. Don't click anywhere yet. Move your cursor around to see how the image preview moves with it. I refer to this as my cursor being loaded with my image and waiting for me to place it somewhere. One way to place it is to click and hold to drag and draw a box around the size I think I want the image to be. You can see that it is now sitting over my text. Let's fix that. 
We do that by going to the text wrap panel. For me, it's located here because I'm using the typography workspace. If you don't see it, you can go get it from the window drop down. text wrap. This little window will open up. Make sure you have your image selected, then choose wrap around object shape. Then it's important to come down here to type and select subject. Now you should see these pathways with a whole bunch of little anchor points. I had to use these selections because my image did not have a transparent background. It had a white background. Now it will ignore the background. Let's switch back to the top selection tool. You might be thinking, um, but nothing happened. Hang tight, it did. We need to move our image behind the text box. Let's do that. There are two ways we can move our image to the back. The first way is to go to the object dropdown, then arrange and send to back. We can now see that it did text wrap. We just couldn't see it until we rearranged those layers. I'll undo that using my Command Z shortcut. The other way to send it to back is to go to your layers panel. If this isn't open, just click this little arrow. These are like folders and subfolders. I see my graphic is this layer, so I will click on it and drag below the other layer. I prefer this manner, but if I find myself with a bunch of unorganized layers, it is easier to use the arrange feature. Let's make another modification to the text wrapping. Notice that the text is awfully tight to the edges of my graphic. We can adjust that by going back to the text wrap panel. Again, make sure your image is selected or nothing will change. We can adjust this area right here. It's called top offset. That refers to the padding or spacing around the subject. I will click the up arrow to increase it. I think it looks nice at 0.1875. Remember how handy the paragraph styles feature was? Well, we can also apply that kind of styling to words or single characters even. We call this character styles. Make sure the text box is not selected because I want to set up my styles first and then I will go apply them. Open up character styles. I'm still in my typography workspace, but if you are not, you can get it from your window dropdown. They really hide it though. It's tucked away under types and tables, then character. In its window, you will likely need to tab over to character styles. We will create a new style using the plus icon. It'll pop in as character style one. Double click and you'll see your options. If you make a bunch of styles, you will want to rename them to make your life easier. I will call this eco and then go down to basic character formats. Under font family, I'll select Arial. Under size, maybe I'll go with 24. Actually, let's bump that down to 22. Over here at tracking, I'd like to increase the spaces between each character. That's what tracking means. I'll choose 25 for just a small amount of tracking. And then I'll go to character color to look for a green since green is commonly associated with anything eco. This green will be fine. I'll click OK. Let's create another style. I will call this one main. The prior settings usually stick. So the only thing I want to do is go to the character color and turn this one back to black and click OK. I can now see my two styles right here. Now let's try this out with our first instance of eco main. I need to double click to get inside my text box so that I can highlight eco. Now I will click on my eco character style. I'll do the same thing with main. Let's see what this looks like. Not bad. This document refers to eco main several times. So let's use a shortcut to apply the rest of them. Go to edit and find change. You may have used something like this in other software. Command or control F is the shortcut to get here. In this window, go to GREP and then under find what, I will select my eco style. This is if I want to change it to another word, but I do not. I just want to change it to the character style I created. I do that by clicking on this icon down here. Another window opens up where I can select my eco style. I'll click OK. Over here, select change all, and we should see a message like this. I have seven replacements made. Click OK and done. This is fantastic, except for the word economy didn't need to be styled. That can happen. To unstyle a word, simply highlight the word and click on none. Let's repeat this whole process from main. Find change. I'll type in main. Down here, I will change the character format to character style main. 
click OK, change all, and I have six replacements made. Looking at this, I can now see that I went a little too big on my eco main font size. Lucky for me, I used the character style feature. I'll make sure nothing is selected and then double click on my eco style to make a quick adjustment. Under basic character formats, I can go to size and arrow it down. Because my preview is checked, I can see it getting smaller in real time. Let's take that right down to 17 and click OK. It worked out for me that it intuited I wanted that change made to my main style as well, and I did. So you have learned how to style paragraphs and characters, and how to add columns and images. I have a tutorial on how to create multiple documents if you're interested. For now though, let's go over how to save and export our creation. The term packaging is important to understand with Adobe InDesign. If you simply saved your document in its native format, .indd, and emailed it to someone to look over, they would get an incomplete file. Your fonts and images do not automatically embed into your work unless you export as a PDF file or something. This will make more sense if we just jump into it. And yes, I pulled up a different, although similar file. Let's go to the file dropdown and then package. The package window should open up. This window is important because we are looking to see if there is an alert to something that might be missing. This is telling me that I do in fact have a missing image and it's notifying me that I'm using the RGB color space for something. We can go to the other tabs to see if our fonts are linked and mine are linked, status okay. I have two fonts. Then under links and images, ah, I have an image here that is missing. Before I package, I want to relink that missing image, so I'll cancel out of this. We relink by opening up the links palette that's located under window and links. Over here is telling me that this tree image is not properly linked, meaning that InDesign can't find it. If you double click this icon, you can go find the image on your desktop and relink it. Here it is. In my case, I had renamed the image, which is why it couldn't find it. So click on that and open, and now the links panel looks happy. No missing links. Let's close out of that and go back to file and package again. Now, when I look through the summary, there are no longer any missing images. It is still letting me know about my RGB color space. Let me explain why. If I go down to my links and images, it's letting me know that my tree image is using the RGB color space. If our project is meant for a digital format, this is fine. However, if this is a professional print project, you'll most likely want to be using CMYK. So with everything in place now, I can click package again, and it's letting me know that it has to be saved before continuing. So yes, I will save it. It creates a folder and gives a default name. You could rename it if you want. I like to check include IDML and include PDF. So what just happened? InDesign created this folder over here. When I open it up, we'll see there are two subfolders inside, document fonts and links. I can click to view my fonts and I can click to view any links, which in this case is my tree image. We also have our PDF version all ready to go, which is great. Here is the .indd source file where we can go back in and do edits if we want. This is an IDML file. Why is this important? Because IDML files allow for compatibility across older versions of InDesign. I'll close that. As you can see, we now have a complete folder with all the assets and information we need. So we could email or upload this to a collaborator or any